track day tires can be really confusing things to buy. So I thought it would be a good idea to take a look at what I classify as three very different tires and see whether the ultimate pace tire, which is regarded as the Pirelli P0 Trofeo R, this tire, is that much quicker in the dry and wet than the Toyo R888, which is kind of the internet's hero. And then we've got the GT Sport GTR3, which is a kind of new tire that's aimed slightly underneath the track day tire, but slightly above the ultra high performance tire. So it's a tire that will feel great on track and has nice firm sidewalls, but won't kill you in the wet in theory. So what I've done, I've borrowed a BMW M2, which I'm super excited about. We're doing the wet testing and braking testing at Myra in Nuneaton. And then we're moving over to Cadwell Park for the ultra high performance dry handling hopefully not crashing test. And we're gonna see which of these three tires really gives the performance they claim. Is the Pirelli gonna be quickest in the dry like all the tests have shown? Does the R888 at almost half the price of the Pirelli give you half of the performance? And then this little thing, the GTR3, new to the market, it's about 15% again cheaper than Toyo. Is it gonna be better in the wet? And can it hold its own in the dry? Because I think that's gonna be the biggest question mark of this tire. Wet testing at Myra is a little bit difficult because it's a very narrow circuit, it's a low grip surface, it's about 0.5 mu, and there's quite a lot of standing water which these track day tires hate. First up with the Pirelli, it was the most fun to drive in terms of the front end. It had the sharpest steering, it had the quickest steering, and it was just really, really pointy. The issue with the Pirelli was it when it gave up grip, it gave up grip very quickly and it took a long time to recover. So you were in the slide and then you were waiting, 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 and then it would just like lurch back. It made you feel quite amateur actually. It was the slowest tire on test as well, about 77 second lap, but I think a lot of that was down to standing water. Moving to the Toyo, you really noticed the front end not being quite as precise. It was still a very pointy tire, but it was just a little bit slower to steer and maybe a little bit more vague at the center of steering. What this did allow you to do was have confidence in the tire, which allowed you to push on a little bit more and just let the car move around the slide. And that rewarded you with lap time. So with the 77 on the Pirelli, the Toyota was a sort of a mid 75, so nearly two seconds a lap faster. Moving to the GT Sport tire, the GTR3, this felt even more like a road tire. It was still very pointy, so probably not quite as soft as modern UHP tires are, because you know everything's getting a soft sidewall but it definitely wasn't quite up to the standards of the other two. It struggled less with aquaplaning and maybe had a slightly more wet bias compound, which meant it was the fastest tire on test at around 73 seconds. The wet braking also confirmed the GT having probably the best wet compound because it stopped the car in the shortest distance. This time the Pirelli was second and the Toyo was third. Distances will be on screen somewhere. So that might kind of give you a bit more of a confirmation that the Pirelli was just very nervous in the wet and it just, didn't give you the confidence levels you needed to drive it quickly. And so a good result for the GT, probably not gonna carry it through in the dry because I'm super excited about driving the Pirelli in the dry. While it was twitchy and nervous in the wet, I'm sure this is the Pirelli's gonna be the best tire in the dry because it's just so pointy and loads up so nicely. But let's move on to Cadwell Park and see what we find out. So unfortunately, I have to stop and interrupt my own video here. Um, the original plan after Mara, as I probably just said, was to come to Cadwell Park. We had it booked exclusively for the evening and we we're gonna run for two and a half hours, get all the data we needed, conclude, present, brilliant. Um, apparently what we found out, although we didn't know on the day, is the M2 doesn't like running without at least half a tank of fuel in. So we were running at around half a tank and it kept on going into limp mode. So we effectively wasted the afternoon. It's lasted 14 miles. <laughs> So I've had to come back to Cadwell Park, as you might be able to tell on a public track day, uh, where we're doing blind laps. We're not allowed to view the timings that we're taking. But at the end of the day, I will conclude the data. Um, I don't think there's going to be much in-car stuff, uh, but hopefully we'll get some good times for you anyway. I might not be allowed to time myself or look at my times on a track day, but I'm allowed to shout at you through a helmet. Sorry if the audio is quite bad. Um, on the Pirellis now, and they are incredible. They have the best turn in, they have the best balance, and they feel like they have the most grip, lap times to confirmed. It's just a really wonderful car. It's really, really confidence inspiring. So if the other two tires where you might be a little bit nervous at points, the Pirelli's absolutely no problem. You know the car's gonna go where you want it to go. 
even on this little jump section it's probably the most stable um, one negative about the Pirellis they take the longest to warm up and then when you're off them if you come off for like half a lap or so they cool down very quickly and then you're worrying about the front end and the back end so as a tyre as a track day tyre it's the ultimate here on the test but it's not going to be the best on street because it needs that heat um, otherwise very very good tyre and as predicted my favourite in the dry okay I'm now out on the Toyo the R888 I, I, I really wanted to like this tyre but it's a massive disappointment it's got so much understeer and you get so little feedback from the front axle it just doesn't really know what it's doing and like I just I, I can't really get over how sad this tyre is it feels like it's got grip when it's loaded up but until it's loaded up there we go some understeer you just don't really know what the front axle is doing it doesn't work well on this car it feels like you can't get enough temperature into it and it's just quite nervous and it's not a fun experience so the r triple a surprisingly disappointing i don't know how that will relate to in lap times compared to the prelli but i'm imagining it's going to be slow probably a couple of seconds a lap okay now i'm out on the gt radials and remember these were the best tires in the wet by quite a margin so i didn't expect these tires to be that good in the dry i didn't think the the grip would hold out it's not quite as grippy as the prelli but my god it's well balanced it turns in feels a little bit softer on the sidewall than the prelli as it should and um, doesn't have the noise problems of the toyo i'm not sure if i mentioned that but that toyo is horribly noisy but for a tire that feels a lot like a road tire it works so well on track and it's it's sharper on the front end than like a michelin pilot sport 4s and it's really confidence inspiring so i don't think the outright limit of grip is quite as high as the toyo but i'm not sure what the time's going to be because it's just like so confidence inspiring the day is over and the times are in and there's a surprise and not so much of a surprise the not so much of a surprise is the pirelli p0 trofeo r as expected dry weather king posted a 142.5 lap which was the fastest lap of the day and it was consistent the toyo r triple eight posted a 144.7 so just over two seconds slower than the pirelli and the gt sport is the surprise that posted a 144.5 so just a smidgen quicker than the toyo and still around two seconds slower than the pirelli but for a tire that works so well in the wet it's impressive so what can we conclude from the three tires subjectively and what would i fit to this car if i was using it as a track day car or as a road car now the pirelli was king of the dry but it came at a price the wet performance especially aquaplaning was sketchy so as a road tire i wouldn't use it as a track day tire best of the three not only was it the fastest but it gave you such good confidence and such good steering feel you just really enjoyed using it of the three it was the only one that didn't overheat so the Pirelli definitely the best in the dry most fun but uh, sketchy in the wet also took the longest to heat up so again something that you've got to think about on a road car is would you get the correct temperature into the Pirelli because even here if you did a half lap cool down lap and then went for it again you just understeer because you wouldn't have the front tire temperature the toyo r triple eight hate to say bit of a disappointment i came here expecting this tire to do really well to be around the pirelli performance because it's like the internet's hero and at half the price it could be incredible value but it kind of feels sadly like half the tire it's it's very numb on the front axle doesn't inspire confidence doesn't really tell you what it's doing and although it's probably got good lateral grip you just don't feel like you can exploit it it doesn't have the flip side of being better in the wet either because it was a little bit quicker on Mara's wet handling but still had trouble with aquaplaning so going using it on the road you would still struggle now the gt sport that's the surprise of the day that is a road tire you can use on track kind of like the original michelin pilot super sport it was direct like the pirelli although it wasn't quite as sharp but it gave you confidence and while i don't think it had the ultimate dry grip of the toyo the r888 um, as is probably shown by the dry braking results the gt gave you so much more confidence you could use the grip more and you enjoyed using it so it posted a very similar a slightly faster lap time than the toyo which i'm sure has higher grip so this is a tire that's very interesting it's important to say this is a an almost final prototype tire so i don't think it's quite available to market yet when it does come to market I'm going to be super interested in putting it against some other 
more road bias rivals like the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S and the Conti Sport Contact 6 because this is a tyre that I think feels like the original Super Sport. I think it's going to be sharper and more direct, especially on the front, than the 4S has got because that's got a little bit soft. So I think this tyre could be really exciting. Whether the wet grip advantage holds up against the tyres like the 4S, I'm not entirely sure because these track day tyres were struggling with aquaplaning and obviously they're not, they're designed to be all allowed dry tyres, whereas this is an all round tyre. But the fact it could match the Toyo in the dry just makes it uh, kind of exciting, kind of interesting. It's, it's that tyre I've been wanting. It's a tyre that's got a firm sidewall, strong steering response, but also has wet performance so you can use it year round. If you've got any questions from this, please ask in the comments below. Um, as always, if you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. The subscriptions mean a lot because I'm trying to build up a number so I get additional YouTube support. The next video will be the fabled Michelin Pilot Sport 4 versus 4S versus Cup 2. I'm shooting it as I'm shooting this next week, so it will probably be two weeks behind on edit. So fingers crossed we don't get rained off again or we don't have car issues again. Um, and that video will be live. Thank you once again to Cadwell Park because this circuit's incredible come down and just drive around it. it you can see why they call it the mini Nürburgring it's such an exciting fun place to drive um, although the barriers are a little bit closer points but you have to come and do it and um, as always happy motoring <laughs>